Hi, my name is Cindy Rang with the Fabric Patch in Ephrata, Washington, and we're going to work on block number two of our Westport Block of the Month. All right, so uh, we did block number one uh, a couple weeks ago, and now we're working on block number two. And just a little reminder, if this is your first time seeing this, is that um, there is the king size Westport, or there's the twin size. We're making 12 different blocks, and um, a lot of them are multiples. And then we're going to finish up by talking about a setting size. Uh, we do have the pattern available. You probably find it in lots of different quilt shops. Uh, you will need the pattern to be following along with us. We also did have some kits in both colorways. I'm not sure what we still have at the time that you're watching this, but um, you're going to see that what we're doing as we work through the blocks is we're just doing a bunch of scrappy stuff. What we encouraged you to do in the first class was to get your fabrics together. So on this page of the pattern, it shows all of the blocks and the colors that we use for each block and in whatever colorway, if you're doing the warm, uh, cool colorway or the warm colorway. And um, we are doing the cool colorway. So um, let's go ahead and get right into what we need. So for this particular block, um, we're actually going to use a half square triangle ruler. So I just want to mention for a second that there are all kinds of ways to make half square triangles. It is one of the most popular blocks um, that we make in quilt making be right behind a square. Square, half square triangle, flying geese. So I would bet that anybody who's been making quilts for a while have all sorts of special tools or tricks or ways that they prefer to make a half square triangle. What I'm going to tell you is something I'm not really supposed I'm not supposed to necessarily share math because this is a copywritten pattern, but I'm going to tell you that this measurement is two inches. It's going to fin finish at inch and a half. So if you want to fast forward ahead and you don't care about her ruler, then you can go ahead and do that. But I'm going to show you something that's kind of cool because I'm going to say that I also have multiple ways to make half square triangles. And my best advice when it comes to any kind of piecing is that you want to be able to make your block efficiently and correctly. So if the way that you're doing it yields you perfect results every single time, then you don't need to do something different. If you find that you have a little bit of a mess, a lot of crooked blocks, a lot of weirdness, it doesn't always work out consistently, then let me just show you this technique. So this is the ruler that I'm going to demonstrate for you. This is the one that she suggests in the pattern and the one that she talks about. It is a creative grid ruler. Um, a creative grid is made by a specific company and we can only buy from a certain distributor. So I think it's probably not something that you can find in chain stores. We do have this on our website at fabricpatch.net. And what's really nice about Creative Grid rulers is a couple of things. One is they have a QR code on every one of their rulers. So all you have to do is take your cell phone, put it in picture mode, put it right over that, and it will take you immediately to a YouTube um, uh, tutorial on exactly how to use this ruler. Every single Creative Grids ruler has their own QR code on it. The other thing that's really nice about a Creative Grid ruler is they have this little scratchy non-slip feature which makes it really really nice. You don't have to have anything um, that you have to put on the back of the ruler. It also comes with written directions exactly how to be able to use it. It's less than 20 bucks. Kind of a nice little ruler. I have to say it does yield pretty consistent results. It's not typically the way that I make half square triangles. I'm just going to tell you that straight up. But in making them for this block, it was nice. They came out exactly right. So I kind of liked it. The other thing I'm going to mention is that if you happen to have this ruler, this is called the Easy Angle Ruler. It's essentially the same idea. Um, this one is um, its just a little bit smaller. Obviously, you can see that. And the other thing about it is that it doesn't have any non-slip features to it. It is less expensive. And whenever I have specialty rulers like this that do something like that, um, I like to add this. 
Um, we sell this in the store, but we do not have this on our website. The reason for that is because it's aerosolized and there are rules when we send something from through USPS and we can't send something that's aerosol. We can send it UPS. So if you are looking for this and you don't have a local quilt shop where you can get it or a local department store that carries this, just email us or call us and we can probably get this to you. But what this is, is this this really cool added grippy stuff. So you just give it a good shake. And usually I do this outside on, in fact, I'm going to, I'm not going to do it in here. I, for just a minute, I was going to demonstrate this to you. My daughter's behind the camera going, oh, don't do it. She's going to get it. Do it. <laughs> uh, because what it is, is when you spray it on there, it's like, it's like what Superman sprays out of his his arm, Spider -Man. right? Spider-Man. Spider-Man. <laughs> Thank God she's here. It's what Spider-Man shoots out. It's this sticky web stuff. And, and it looks just like that. And it kind of goes everywhere. But So you put it down on your grass, spray it, let it sit for like 30 seconds. And when you pick it up, it, it stays grippy, sticky. It's really, really nice. It works really good. You can't mess it up. Um, I've had this one can for probably a couple of years. I use it occasionally. I take it out to the retreat center and let those guys use it. It works really well. Um, and if it kind of wears off, you can just touch it up a little bit. It makes it slightly opaque, maybe just a little bit, but you can still see everything through it. And it works really well to make non-grippy rulers grippy. That's the name. Anyway, so this is just another thing just to mention. And, um, if you're coming for a visit, put it on your list to purchase while you're here, and then you're okay. Uh, all right, so let's go ahead and just get right into this block. Okay, so this is our second block that we're making. It's kind of cute. Uh, uh, at first glance, it seems similar to the first one, but it really isn't. What we're going to do is we're going to make all of these little half square triangles to make all of these pinwheels around here, and then we're taking these and we're making a little corner snowball block for these into this big nine patch. So um, one other thing to mention that we talked about on the first block is that every one of these blocks has this little block border around it and it's so that the block will float and you can kind of see that it's like it floats in its little sea of background there and if I forget to mention this, if you're sewing along with us, when you go to cut this strip, the size that it says, I think it tells you to cut it inch and a half, cut it a tiny bit bigger because if something weird happens and your block ends up just a little bit smaller, that little extra bit all the way around that block will give you that insurance so that when you do go to trim this up to the appropriate size, you'll be fine. So it's actually kind of nice. We tend to call that a coping strip because it copes with the fact that, uh, oops, something bad happened in here. But typically the best rule if you are a beginning sewer is to make sure that you've cut accurately and that your seam allowance is a perfect quarter inch and that you've pressed accurately. And if those three things happen, then you'll be fine. All right, and the colors that we're using that they're suggesting, if you've picked out your colors ahead of time, we're using the background color, which is color number one, and then we're using color number seven and color number nine. And so for us, what we were using, um, it ended up being these. And so we've cut our strips, and what's kind of funny about this is that when you're using this ruler, so what we're gonna do is we're going to make the half square triangle blocks. And so if you look at this ruler, again, uh, if you start cutting or, you know, you don't want to find my YouTube video again, remember just to scan that QR code and you're fine. But it has that measurement. And since we're using a two inch strip, we've got that line right there. So all we're going to do is we're just going to line this up. And you can see it's right on that two. I probably have this upside down and um, it's right on the edge right there. It's not going to slip because of that. And then when I cut, I always move my fabric first just to make sure that everything is cut properly before I move my ruler. And then I'm gonna turn it around. Now you can see it. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just going to line this up. You can see it's right on that too, right on that blunt edge right there. Cut, move my strip. 
and I'm just going to keep going down. The pattern tells you how many to cut. You need like 60 of your background, and I think you need, I don't know, 24 of one color, 36 of the other color, and you're just going to keep cutting these. Oops. And then after you've cut enough, what you're going to do is you'll take these two pieces right sides together and this is going to look wrong but what you actually do is you line this up right sides together which gives you this weird little overlap so you have a little dog ear right there and you have one right there so put a little pin in it or hold it very gently, put your little clip in there, whatever you need to do. Take this over to the sewing machine and we're going to sew these. And when you sew these, what will happen is with your quarter inch seam allowance, you're gonna line it up right on that edge and what will happen is you'll see that you're going to end up sewing from that edge to that edge right there. I'm going to flip it over on the other side and you'll be able to see it also. See it's right there, right on that edge because that's what's happened is that's your quarter inch. Then when you press this open, here's those little dog ears. And what I tend to do with those dog ears, I can snip them off or I can just take my rotary cutter and just, and you do want to cut those off. Some people say, gosh, it doesn't matter, just leave them on there. But I would say, as a long armor, I don't like all of that extra bulk in my seam allowances. It's going to give you those funny little nipples. I mean, you've got all of these um, seams that are coming together anyway, and so if you add one little dog ear on each of those corners, that's four extra pieces of fabric in there, and what's going to happen is that block is not going to lay flat. It's going to have a funny little mountain right there. So, um, so cut those off, and then that is your perfect half square triangle. And again, there's no waste, there's no trimming, we're just going to press it. We talked about pressing last time, but the deal with pressing, let me get this over so you can see it, um, I do like to use best press, but the big thing is I just use the edge of my, my iron and I just rock that open so that my I can totally see that that's perfectly flat right there and there's nothing hidden inside that seam allowance. This is now a two inch half square triangle which will finish at inch and a half. So I'm going to make all of those and you're going to see that we've got quite a few that we're making. And then let me show you how these little blocks go together. This is a little bit more old school because what will happen is even though we started with a two inch strip and on this two inch strip we used our ruler to cut our little half square triangle, but notice that when we did that, it actually bumped it in just a little bit, right? That's why we had our little blunt edge right here and our little extra. This is not two inches anymore. The reason that I want to mention that is that you might think, well, gosh, I've already got these squares here. Why don't I just put my squares right sides together, draw a line, and sew through there? If you do that, it's going to be a half an inch too small. So don't do that. Um, you can make half square triangles that way, but not out of your two inch squares. All right. So for these, for your quarter half square triangle blocks, you're just going to take your square that you've cut, she's going to have you cut four of them, and this is kind of old school. You're going to take your squares, put it right sides together, draw your line with an appropriate utensil. I tend to use a friction marker. The reason that I like a friction marker is because uh, it will come off with the iron, so if I've made a mistake, or if I just don't want to see the mark afterwards. It has this nice ballpoint edge. I hope you can see that. That's blue on a dark green, but it also comes red, comes black, comes a couple different colors. And so what's really nice is after I've sewn, and I'm going to sew right on that line, and then I'm going to cut from a quarter inch over, I'm going to cut this part off, and it's going to give me a block that looks like this. 
and then once I've pressed that open, I need to make four of these, and that's these blocks right here. All right, and just to show you, I would sew that first, but just to show you, as soon as the iron hits it, off it goes. That's the friction marker, really important tool that I use. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and make my half square triangles. I'm going to put my pinwheels blocks together. I'm gonna do my other uh, uh, quarter snowball blocks, and then I'll be back and show you at the end. Okay, I want to show you something that we call the clipping trick, and I don't know where I first learned this, but I feel like I've been doing this for probably 20 years. And what it is, it's, it's a little clipping and pressing trick so that you don't have that little nipple that I was talking about when all of those seams come together. Because even though we have clipped off all of those little um, dog ears, you can see there's a whole lot of fabric that comes together in the center right there. So if you were to just go ahead and press and maybe try to decide which one this is, where this is coming, you're going to have, end up with tons of bulk there. Your other option, some people will say, oh, well, you can go ahead and just do dress seams and press those open. And you can do whatever you feel comfortable with, but for me personally, I don't like that because then the only thing between my quilt and the batting is that thread that's right there. So I feel like when we have pressed seams over, it makes a much stronger quilt that's going to last for a long time. So what you do when you do the pressing, the clipping trick, is that, of course, we always press to the dark, and so when we press that one over, we know that what we're going to do is we're going to clip this light. So we just take our scissors and we go in, and we make a little clip that goes right up to, but not through, that little seam that we have here. Then over here on the same side, we know we're going to press this one over, so we're clipping the light, again, right there, so that it goes right up to, but not through the seam. And then, once you've done that, what can happen is, you put this down, and we know that this one's going over here, this one's going here, and then this one, you just kind of open it up. And I've heard people say something about, they use like a rubber mallet or something, I don't know. That is not something that I have in my sewing room. And I don't find that it's necessary. I just push it pretty hard, and then I take my iron. I do use Best Press. And I hope you can see. And again, that's why I like a, a heavy iron. And so it looks like this. And so then what I have, you can't really tell, but it's a fairly flat seam without any puckers. And it just lays nice and flat, and all of my points have come together. And it's again, it's called the clipping trick. And then once I've done that, I do go over and I um, I press the top again. Um, but anyway, so that is how I do my pinwheels. So I've got my four pinwheels here, and we've got our dark ones that are going in the center. We're going to lay out our block. Hmm. Was he spinning the wrong way? Oh, he's spinning the wrong way. Doggone it. All right, so our first little casualty here. Here, let's put this together. I apparently should have mentioned to you guys, little poopy heads. This guy has to go a different way. So, da. So, uh, if it was like that, it will work. So, I'm sure that somewhere in the directions, it told me that... So um, I'm going to take this out, flip it around, and put that in there, and um, then I'll have my block done. I'm going to show you this for one second. Um, I have done this enough that I know where to put my fingers when I'm pressing this, but if your iron gets all up in here and you end up burning yourself, I just wanted to mention that there, um, these are thermal thimbles and there's a set of three of them. And so you can put them on your index finger, on your thumb, wherever you need them to be so that if you get your finger all up in there and um, you don't want to get burned, then uh, this will 
protect your finger if you accidentally touch the iron. Okay, it's a little uh, covered in threads, but it is now correct. So as we lay this out, a couple things I want to show you. One thing is that if you look at this quarter snowball block, you'll see that the block is the same size, but see how it has that weird overhang and it might not look right? That is absolutely right, because by the time we sew our quarter inch seam allowance, that's why everything is going to match up in terms of those points. So when you lay this whole block out, now that it looks correct, it's just gonna be just a basic nine patch. So we're going to sew this row together, this row together and this row together. So pin and clip so that you don't get anything mixed up or turned and then um, sew the rows together. And that's our block. We'll end up with our border around the outside, our little block border or like I like to call it, a coping strip. And then um, block number two is done. Now, if you are making the king size version, let me just double check you need to make three of these blocks. And if you're making the twin size version, you'll need to make two. One other thing I'm gonna mention is that we did decide to go ahead and change this so that it spun properly. But the truth is, if you just like, heck with that, I'm moving on. And if you would have left the block the other way, uh, there's no shame in that. Sometimes it's kind of fun to have something that you can just say is a um, design opportunity to make that block something a little bit different. All right, I'm gonna sew this together and I'll show you when you're done. Thank you for watching our video. We invite you to leave a comment, hit the like button, or better yet, subscribe to our channel so you never miss an episode. You can also visit our Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or Pinterest pages, or find all of those things and our online store at fabricpatch.net.